Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Now, if you're a new prepper or even somebody who's been doing it for a little while, it's pretty easy to make mistakes. And while many of the facets of preparedness may seem simple on the surface, how you actually go about doing those things can make a pretty big difference between success and failure. Then you combine that with the fact that when it comes to prepping, you have a lot of bases that you have to cover and doing all of those in a balanced way can be a big challenge for folks. So today we're going to be talking about what I would do differently if I had to start over as a new prepper in 2023 based off some mistakes that I've made and then just the current state of the world that we're in. The first thing that I would do if I had to start over this year is I would start off with an early focus on essentials rather than just on survival gear. And to be honest with you guys, when I first started out, I really was more of a gear collector than I was an actual prepper. I grew up enjoying things like hunting and camping, so a lot of my prepping was really just sticking with stuff that I already knew and enjoyed. But over time, I started experiencing things that show me that in most emergency situations, I'm not going to be trying to survive out in the wilderness for an extended period of time. And I'm also not probably going to be living out some sort of Red Dawn type fantasy. My needs in the situations that I faced were much more practical than those things. Now, I am not saying to forego things like wilderness survival gear, wilderness skills, or being able to defend yourself because all of those were important. But for me personally, I overdid those things to the point that I completely neglected some very, very important aspects of preparedness. An example of that would be March of 2020, when everything was just completely falling apart. I was more worried about keeping myself and my loved ones fed and wiping my rear than I was about having to fend off Mad Max and his buddies. Now, I know in some places there, there were a lot more people problems, you could say during that time, but where I lived, things were much more calm. Now, when it comes to actually gathering daily essentials like food and water, organization is extremely important. And in all honesty, that is one area where I can still do quite a bit better than what I'm doing now. Keeping an up-to-date inventory of things like food, water, medications, and fuel will allow you to know A, what you have, but also what you need to get. And having that information, it'll help you set realistic goals that you can move towards going forward. Now, money is something that can be a big problem for people, and in all honesty, it's been a problem for me and my family in the past as well. But if you can't go out and buy a whole month's worth of food, can you buy three days' worth? If you can't buy three days' worth, can you buy one day's worth of extra food next time you go to the grocery store? The key is to set realistic goals for your particular situation and be very intentional about meeting those goals. It isn't about getting everything all at once. Slow, steady progress is what's going to win it for most people. Now, one thing that I did a pretty good job of is that I educated myself on different aspects of preparedness. And to do that, I just bought a whole lot of books. My survival library is pretty substantial. It covers things from just general emergency preparedness to personal defense to wilderness survival. And I have read a lot of those books. I've obtained some more that I haven't been able to get to yet. But as far as the core works, like how to Survive the End of the World as We Know It by James Wesley Rawls or Prepper's Long-Term Survival Guide by Jim Cobb. I've read those and numerous others. Now, a while back, I did a video that was Best Books for Preppers and Survival. I'll be sure to link to that at the end of this video. Now, another thing you can do is just watch YouTube videos. But one thing you want to be very careful of with reading and watching videos is that when you learn information or you see new skills presented, you need to act on that information, do what's suggested if it's a good suggestion, and then also practice the skills that you see. Otherwise, it's really not getting you anywhere. Some people, they just kind of get sucked into a black hole of information and they never really do anything for themselves. One area that I wish I could do completely over would be my finances. Having good spending habits and knowing where your money's going, it's just, you know, good basic stuff for everybody to do that, quite frankly, not a whole lot of us actually do. For me personally, I started off really good at it when I was younger. Like when I was in college and I got my first job, I, I, I mean, I tracked every penny. But as I started making more money through my career, 
I kind of got a little bit lazy and it's bit me in the rear. But doing things like reducing your debt and increasing your savings, that's just good foundational things for everybody to do. First of all, it's going to help you if you're in a situation where maybe you lose your job. Because as much as preppers like to think of like the big horrible things that could happen, like natural disasters, wars, or other large-scale situations, the fact of the matter is that most of us, the disaster that we're most likely to face is a personal financial one. But another good thing about having your finances squared away is that after you have all that taken care of, then it becomes a lot easier to put money towards preps, like long-term food storage. Another thing that I would do differently is that I would try to have multiple ways to cook off-grid much earlier than what I actually did. For years, I was relying on one propane camp stove, and in all reality, I didn't have all that much fuel for it. I don't know how long I would have lasted, but it was not a feasible long-term alternative. Now, I've kind of gone the other way. Now I'm in the situation where I have multiple ways to cook off-grid that use both natural and man-made fuel sources. While having things like that propane stove or a butane stove is good for just general preparedness or having something you could take on a camping trip or hunting, it's also a good idea to have other things like a small alcohol stove that you can put in your bug out bag or maybe even some type of rocket stove or Kelly kettle that can use natural materials once you run out of your man-made fuel sources. But saying that, you don't want to be in a situation where you have so many different cooking methods that it's impossible to support all of them. And what I mean by that is that you cannot set aside enough fuel for them to actually be useful long term. It would be far better to have maybe one reliable camp stove that you have plenty of fuel for rather than half a dozen different stoves that all use a different fuel source and you only have like one can of fuel for each one of them. And that brings me to my next thing folks may want to focus on in 2023 and that's just being able to support the gear that you already have. In addition to things like camp stoves, it could also be heaters. If you have something like a buddy heater, ask yourself how long could I keep that heater running using the fuel that I have on hand? And if that heater uses the same fuel source as something like a stove, that needs to be taken into account as well. Generators are another thing that I think people kind of drop the ball on when it comes to having an adequate fuel supply. So if you have like a 10,000 watt generator that you can hook up to a transfer switch and it can power most if not your entire home, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good if you just have one five gallon gas can in the backyard and your plan is to fill it up and then get more gases needed because you could be snowed in, there could be a gas shortage, or there could be a situation where everything's just gone to pot and nothing is up and running, like some sort of big storm happens. So if you have those kind of things, make sure that you can keep them running long term. And in addition to fuel, anything with an engine is going to need things like oil, spark plugs, air filters, and then just general spare parts for other kinds of mechanical equipment as well, along with the tools needed to fix them. And if you're somebody who uses things like wood-burning fireplaces or wood-burning stoves, ask yourself, how long will the wood that I have on hand last if I need to use this? Because you might not be in a situation where you can order more, even if you have your own land, you could become sick or injured and not able to go harvest those materials. Another thing that I would do differently in 2023 is expand my defensive capabilities beyond just firearms. While being able to stop a threat is important, I think most of us would agree that it would be far preferable to not be in that sort of situation in the first place. There were things that I didn't do for a while that I wish I'd done sooner, like hardening the entrances to my home to make it harder to get into that can prevent home invasions, or at the very least give you more reaction time so that you can deal with it more effectively. Also, making your home less of an, of an appealing target, doing things like trimming shrubs, giving people less of a place to hide, not putting out you know, your big, huge TV box right next to the trash can out in the open for everybody to see that you got a huge new expensive TV. Those are good things to do as well. And if you're out in public, just having good situational awareness, those are all things that can keep you out of trouble. All that being said, you can do everything right. You can try your hardest and do all these just good best practices and something bad could still happen. So it's very important that you still have the ability 
to defend yourself and your loved ones if you're put in that situation. Another thing that I would do different in 2023 is learning essential skills. And one of those is gardening. I put that off for a really long time, but I've been doing it for a couple of years now. Even with that experience, I'm still learning a lot. I'm still making mistakes. Now, even if you're just able to do like a container garden or sprouting and things like that, that's still helping you learn a very useful skill so that you can apply that knowledge on a larger scale if necessary, and it's also helping you supplement your food supply. Another thing that I personally need to work on this year is getting into better shape. I used to be way more awesome than I am now. Now I'm like the opposite of awesome. I'm kind of chubby and my knees hurt when I try to do fancy things. And so, I mean, I need to get out and about more, especially now that my current job requires me to do less physical activity than my previous job. I'm going to have to be more intentional about getting out and actually being active. Home repair is another good skill to have. Being able to do things like clear clog drain lines or replace ballast and fluorescent lights. It's probably saved me hundreds of dollars over the years. And kind of one of my big philosophies about prepping is that if you can't handle just the small inconveniences that happen in everyday life, if you don't have the skills needed to deal with those, how in the world are you going to deal with a situation where everything just completely falls apart? It's going to be very difficult for you. So I think as you go through life trying to be as self-sufficient in as many areas as you can, I think that's always going to be beneficial. And if you haven't started this already, start working on some basic outdoor survival skills like building fires, making shelters, tying knots. All those things, they're very cheap to learn. They don't cost all that much money, if anything, to get started with some of them, and they'll be very useful if you need them. Now, when learning these skills and investing your time and money in them, be sure to balance these with your particular situation and the things that you're most likely to face. Another thing that you need to balance is your stored preps and your general survival skills. Relying too much on one or the other can be a recipe for disaster. For example, if you're somebody who's mainly relying on stored preps and you don't have a lot of skills to back those up, when you eventually run out of your supplies because you were put in a situation that lasted longer than you thought it would or you just use your resources faster, you're going to have very few options. But if you're somebody who knows how to purify water, how to trap animals, how to garden, or how to forage, then that's going to help you survive for a longer period of time, and it's going to help the survival items that you started with to begin with last longer than they would have. But if you're somebody who's relying solely on survival skills and doesn't have stored preps, that can be equally as dangerous because you might be in a situation where you're too sick or injured to perform basic survival tasks or the resources that you were depending on may not be available like you thought they would be. Maybe a natural disaster destroys food resources that you were counting on or maybe a local body of water becomes contaminated for some reason or another. Then also, I mean, people might just descend on a certain area and strip it of its natural resources and that could put you in a bind as well. So probably the best advice that I could give preppers in 2023 is to just be as flexible as you can in as many situations as possible. Aside from not pigeonholing yourself with either just stored preps or survival skills, you also want to be flexible in other areas like being able to bug in but also bug out if necessary. Now I know that most of us, we want to stay at home. We want to stay where our supplies are, where we're comfortable, and most of us would fight tooth and nail to be able to do that, but there could be something like a weather event that requires us to leave temporarily, or it could also be a situation where we have to retreat so we can regroup and then come back later on. Also, mentally game plan different things. Sit around and think, how could a particular situation unfold? And try to find holes in your prep so that you can fill those before you actually need them. Then another thing, if it's been a while since you've had a power outage, go to your main breaker, flip that sucker for a day, and then see if your preps will actually do what you think that they will. Now, if you guys want to see my survival library that I talked about earlier, go ahead and click over here. And if you want to see ways that you can make your home much harder to break into, go ahead and click over here. Thank you all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.